Welcome back to another episode of Not Financial Advice. And if that ridiculous expression on my friend's Steve's face was subconsciously what pushed you over the edge to clicking into this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Kiering. This is a stock that a new subscriber had recommended that I review. So I wanted to thank them very much. And I came across this company never having heard of it before. Um, Kiering is a uh, French company, consumer discretionary. They deal in luxury brands. Let's actually just familiarize ourselves real quick. So they deal in the brands Gucci, Balenciaga, Saint Laurent, uh, as well as many others that I do or do not uh, recognize. But Gucci, Balenciaga, Saint Laurent, um, luxury brands, you hear a lot about them in rap music. Um, obviously, for the uh, rich and famous, these are brands that are um, like everyday things for them. But it really reminds me of the company LVMH. Uh, so Louis Vuitton and Hennessy is uh, probably one that would be instructive to compare Kering to, Caring to, I would say, LVMH. Um, and so it sort of piqued my interest. I'll probably end up taking a look at that one as well. Um, but let's get started right away with the price of the stock. So it's down 54% from its all-time highs. Um, this chart looks very interesting to me. And so we can see here the price of the stock is $42.12. But of course, what we're most interested in is getting a better sense of the fair value of each share of curing. So let's get started and go over to Qualtrum as always. It's a suite of stock software that I pay for, but I don't have an affiliation with. So I will leave a link for Qualtrum in the description below if you'd like to use this software yourself. So let's get started and see what we can see. Um, I did double check the data being an international company. I just wanted to make sure that everything was on the up and up. Um, and so some data is here and the data all appears to be accurate to me. Some data is missing, but won't be uh, required for us to get a sense of the value of this company. So we can see there's a healthy free cash flow yield. Um, they have more cash than debt. And, um, you know, I would, I would hazard a guess that this is a, a large cap company. Let's see if we can see the market cap. Yeah, 49 and a half billion euros, which is something like 51 billion US dollars. So it's going to be a large cap company. Um, if I did my math right there, and that's another thing that we double check. So I'll show you the receipts on that as well. Um, but let's get right into it to get an idea of what this company trading at $42.12 is worth on a per share basis. First thing we're going to do is look at revenue. Uh, this threw me off have not seen a revenue price chart like that. Um, and so we'll take it at face value for just this moment, and then we'll dig into it a little bit more. Um, if you haven't already, I will remind and ask you to hit like and subscribe on the video. I sure appreciate it. So let's go back uh, 10 years. And so going back to 2012, they did $9.75 billion in revenue. Uh, 10 years later, the most recent data we have uh, they have 2x that number up to 20 and uh, 20.35 billion. So 2x their revenue in 10 years, not bad. 20.3, uh, 20.4 billion dollars in revenue. That's a lot of money. So we're going to be using this number we see here. Over the last 10 years, they've grown at a compound annual growth rate of 7.65% per year in top line revenue growth. Remember that number, 7.65. It's going to be important later. Um, spoiler alert, because I've looked into this and I found a justification for what was going on here, um, the revenue on this company is going to be a check mark. Let's look at free cash flow. Free cash flow um, looks fantastic parabolic even um so really strong numbers on free cash flow up 13 and a uh, third percent uh cagr each year their free cash flow is growing by 13 
uh, and a third percent. That's absolutely fantastic free cash flow growth. So $3.2 billion of free cash flow in the most recent year we have data for. That looks really, really nice to me. This is becoming uh, a very interesting company to look at, to say the least. So um, cash and debt position looks just fine to me. More cash than debt. Let's take a look at dividends. Um, this might have been a special dividend, which is a thing companies can do sometimes, but we can see dividend growth rate. Another phenomenal number, 13.4% uh, compound annual growth rate on the dividend. So this is potentially a really nice dividend play as well. Um, do we have any data on what their dividend what their div yield is. Oh, I have that data. That is over here. So let's look at the dividend. Um, in Europe and in other places, dividends are either paid twice a year or once a year. Um, so one out of 42, um, the dividend looks healthy on a $42 stock, having a dollar dividend, whether that's once or twice a year, um, it doesn't seem like it's a low yielding company by any means. If I can get some more information, I'll put that in the uh, description below. Keep on pushing here, like, and subscribe to the video if you haven't already. In the last 10 years, uh, the company is buying back shares, uh, slow, slow but steady. And so that is another check mark. Dividends are a check mark. Cash and debt is a check mark. Now let's take a look at the company's uh, ability to take our investment dollars or bonds that they sell and convert that uh, profitably into free cash flow. So looking at the return on capital employed, it's very high. Um, it appears to be over 20%, or it appears to be just, just at or just shy of 20% over the last five years. And this is trending along with its uh, parabolic increase in free cash flow growth. So that makes sense to me, and that looks really, really, really good. Um, so let's see if this chart's working. So historically, they've traded at about a 14 PE, which is pretty cheap. Um, and it's unclear. I think that's probably close to what their PE is right now. Looking at these international stocks can be a little bit tricky, but we have all the data that we need. So let's be reminded of the price of the stock. Uh, after I'm going to just show my uh, work here. So I did go ahead and convert everything as it required converting uh, on curing stock. So this here uh, is what I did to come up with my input on the debt on the company. So I took the debt number, took the debt number here, uh, verified on Yahoo Finance that all of these numbers we're seeing are in fact in euros, brought that over here, and this is in US dollars. And so we have a $42 stock. We have a $42 stock, $42.12. Uh, down 54% from all-time highs, $42 stock. Let's take a look at the fair value. So based on everything that we discussed, um, we have a average free cash flow over the last five years of just shy of $3 billion. Um, another important metric, like and subscribe. Cash on hand, $4.6 billion. Total debt. Uh, $3 billion, shares outstanding, uh, 1. 1. 1.2 billion is the number on the shares outstanding. Make sure I got that right. I did get that right. All right. 1.23 billion on shares outstanding. And then we'll remember that number. I think it was something in like the 7, 7.5, 7.7 .7 range. Uh, so what I've put moving forward is a growth rate over the next five years of six and a quarter percent, drop down to 4% through year 10, terminal growth rate of 3%, uh, $42.12 stock, I believe it was, value $43. So there you have it. Uh, luxury on sale, currying.
that was a good find, my friend. Uh, thank you so much for sending that over. And as always, if there are any companies you'd like for me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to make a video just for you. Uh, so drop the ticker symbol in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.